Hello everybody, this video accompanies Notebook 3 of the series Exploratory Computing with Python. My name is Mark Bucker and I work at the Delft University of Technology. Today's topic is loops and if statements. Loops are used for things you have to do more than once. For example, if you want to do something five times, you type 4i in range 5, and then let's say print the, val the va value of i is i. And I hit shift enter, then you see what happens. It loops five times, and the first time you loop through this, i is 0. The second time you loop through it, i is 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. You've done it a total of five times, and it stops. So the question maybe is, what is this range 5 statement? Let's try that. Range 5. Ah, range 5 is simply a list of 5 numbers starting at 0 and stopping before you reach 5. It's actually the list equivalent of A range. If we do A range, <coughs> oh, we don't get the right thing. Why do we not get it? Well, we probably should import NumPy. So let's do that import numpy can type today numpy s and p and p dot a range five is an array with five numbers while just range gives us five numbers integers um, that is a list so i could have replaced above statement with that list let's try that for i in, and then we just say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, get the same result as we did above. So why is it nice? Well, we can use any value for that list we like. So it doesn't have to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It could be 0, well, not even 0, <coughs> 8, 12, 102, 3, and minus 40. And it would also work. In fact, it doesn't even have to be numbers. Number 12 could just be hello. Number 102 be, could be 102 square. That's probably a big number. This one could be a function, the function np dot sign. And if you run this, then you nicely see the first time you loop through this, it picks the first item in the list which is number 8, then it picks the word hello, then it picks 102 squared which turns out to be 10,404. The fourth time it loops through it, it has this function which has this signature and the fifth time it's just minus 40. Pay attention to the syntax of a for loop. When I do for i in range 5, then I add a colon the colon indicates that this is where the loop starts. After, after that I hit enter, and you notice that the IPython notebook automatically indents. That indenting is good coding practice because I know I'm now inside the loop, but it's also required by Python. By indenting it knows like all the statements that I'm going to type now are in the loop. So I can do print hello. I can calculate the value of a, which is say i plus 20, and then I can print uh, a to the screen. Now I say like, oh, I've now I'm done with the loop, so I hit uh, the backspace or the delete key on the Mac. I'm stop indenting. I'm outside the loop now, and I print I am done. I hit Shift Enter, and we'll see what happens. So every time it goes through this and goes through it five times, it first prints the word hello, then it calculates the variable a, and it prints a to the screen. So it does this five times, a is 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and when it's done, it stops with the loop, and it does the next statement, and the next statement is print I am done. That is the basic idea of a for loop. The other topic of today is an if loop, and we're going to combine the for loop and the if loop at the end. But an if loop, we already learned a little bit about that, um, has the following syntax. If a larger than 5, well, you first have to give a a value. 
So say A is input. So we're going to type it in. If A larger than 5, we print A is larger than 5 to the screen. Um, let me scroll down a little bit. We hit Shift Enter. The input bo box pops up and let's say A is 7. So I enter 7, I hit Enter and it prints to the screen A is larger than 5 because 7 is larger than 5. Let's run this again. So I go to the same code cell. I hit Shift Enter. I do a let's do a value smaller than five. So I hit three. Nothing happens. Well, why not? Well, it asks, is A larger than five? No, it's not. So it never does this, and there's nothing else to do. That's maybe not so nice. So let's add another statement. Else, else, print A is not larger than five. Let's see that. So now, if A is larger than 5, it prints this. Otherwise, it prints that. So let's do the otherwise. So if A is 2, it prints A is not larger than 5. What if A is 5? Let's see. I go back to the code cell. I hit Shift Enter. Let me give 5. What do you think it's going to do? Well, 5 is not larger than 5. So it should do the, the last one. It should print A is not larger than 5. And it does. What if I wanted to be larger than 5 included in here? Well, then I say, well, if A is larger or equal to 5, then I say A is larger or equal to 5. Let's try that. So if A is 6, it says A is larger or equal to 5. If I do Shift Enter and I do 5, oh, A is also larger or equal to 5. And if A is 4, then A is not larger than 5. I could have done a separate one for that. We could extend the if statement. We'll say, all right, if A is larger than 5, I do that. If A is smaller than 5, so then I would say, else if A is smaller than 5, I print that. A is smaller than 5. So here I say it's larger than 5. Um, and it's not else if, it's called elif in Python, but of course it stands for else if. Else, and you can have as many elif as you want, um, but we'll stop here with one. Then I print a is smaller than, oh, a is equal to five, sorry. Let's see, if a is seven, it prints larger than five. If it is four, it prints is smaller than 5, and if it is 5, it prints it's equal to 5. Notice again the syntax of an if statement. You do the if, then you do the condition, then you do a colon. Um, then you have to indent, and all the statements in here that are indented are within the if loop. So I can print another statement here, I can, or I can calculate b, b is equal to a plus 23, and I can print a. A is larger than 5 and then the value of B if you want to. So if now A is 8, so it's going to do the first one, A is larger than 5. It says A is larger than 5 and then it prints the value of B. Let's combine a for loop and an if statement. For I in range, oh not in range, let's do a list. 2, 8, 3, 5, 10, well, I might apply one more, 12. Uh, if i is larger than 5, print i, i, comma, i larger than 5. Else, print i, comma, i smaller than 5. And then Hit Shift Enter, it's going to execute that. Let's see if that works. The first time I, you loop through this, I is equal to 2, and it print 2, I smaller than 5. Uh, next time it is 8, I is larger than 5. Then it's 3, 5, 10, and 12. That seems to work just fine. You can also combine two loops together, two for loops, 
and those are called nested loops. So let's create, as an example, an array, a two-dimensional array of random numbers. Now, we haven't learned about random numbers yet. We'll learn about that in the statistical notebooks that we'll do later on. So I'll just create it here. Uh, the NumPy package has a, a um, function called, a uh, package called random, a sub-package, and that pack package has a function called randint that will generate random integers. Um, you see here, you give it a low, you give it a high, the high is not included, it says here, exclusive, and a size. So say we go from 0 to 10, well, let's go to 11, so 10 is included, and we want to have four rows uh, and eight numbers. Shift Enter, there you see, we get an array back with random integers between 0 and 10, or between 0 and 11, 10 is included, four rows of eight columns. And we're going to store that in a variable. Let's call it x. And we'll print x so we'll see what it is. What I want to do now uh, is I... Oh, by the way, if you run this again, it will create a different random um, array. See, now their values are different. Every time you run it, it's different. But we stored it in x, so we're not going to run it again. These are the values. And we're going to... Well, we, I don't want this array. I wanted to run it again. That's better. What I want to do is, for each row, I want to calculate the maximum value. So what do I do? I loop. First, I pick the first row, and I find the maximum value in the row. And we're going to do that the hard way. We're going to, for demonstration purposes, use a double loop, a nested loop. So we go for i row in range, and we have four rows. And then we'll go... Uh, we'll say, all right, the maximum value we, get, we found so far, m is equal to 0. That's the smallest number we have. Then we loop through all the values in that row for uh, j, uh, j call, the number of the column, in range. And we had 8 columns. We say, if x i row j call is larger than m, Right, then we have found a larger value than the maximum we found so far. Then we say m is equal to x i rho j call. All right, so when we execute this, the first time i rho is 0, so we take this row. Then we go through all the columns in this row. The first time we go through this, it's the value 8. We say is, if 8 is larger than m and m is 0, then, oh, then we have to find a new maximum value. We say m is equal to that value, which is 8. Then we do that for every number in the column, and it turns out the maximum value of the first row, the row with index 0, is 8. We do that for every one, and once we are done with the row, we print the maximum value of row i row is... We hit shift enter and we go and it finds in the first row the maximum value is 8 the second row the maximum value is 8 the third row the maximum value is 9 and the last one is 10 so it seems like it worked all right what i wanted to show is we have a nested loop a 4 1 here a second 4 1 there then here we have an i row and a j call the number of the row and the number of the column so we can we have the index in the two-dimensional array x then we have an if statement, we set our value, we find our maximum value, and once we are done with going through all the columns of that row, we print inside the for loop of the rows, we print the maximum value of row is that. That's an example of a nested loop and an if statement. Now the nice thing is, we could have done this with one statement. If we would have typed a max for the maximum value of the array, or np.a max, because it's part of the NumPy package. You see it comes up, it says, ah, you can give it an array, and you give it, give it an axis. If you don't give it the axis, it finds the maximum value of the array, which is 10. But I want to have the maximum value of each row. So if you say, all right, the first axis is um, the rows, the second axis is the columns, so that is comma 1, right? It has index 1. If I hit Shift-Enter, it finds four numbers, 8, 8, 9, and 10, which are indeed the values I had. 
If I would have said the axis is number zero, so it goes through the rows, it finds the value of each, um, or goes through the row, so it finds the maximum value of each column, so it returns eight values, we can show that too. It finds out in this column, the maximum value is nine, and the next one it's seven, then it's nine, nine, and so forth. It seems to work all correctly. That's all I had for you today. I hope to see you next time.